After you bring a bunch of video clips into a video project in Photoshop and they're all residing on the timeline, you invariably will want to rearrange them and trim them and perhaps delete some of them. So I'm going to show you how to do all three things here in this lesson. And rather than provide you with a Photoshop file with a bunch of video clips already residing on a timeline, I want you to put some video clips there so you get used to the process of starting up a new project and adding clips to it. So to do that, let's go to Photoshop and start it up. By now you're probably opening up Photoshop to the Motion Workspace because you've been working in that, but let's just say you're going to start off in the Essentials Workspace and then let's say if you switch to the Motion Workspace. And now let's add some clips to this timeline here. So click on the plus over here. Let's go to the Bike Writing folder inside the Working Files folder. So the Working Files folder is here. We've got some video clips here. Then there's the Bike Writing folder. And inside there I want you to select all six of these clips. So you click on the first one and shift click on the sixth one and click Open. That puts all six clips here in sequence from the first one to the sixth one here on this track. What I want to do now is I want to look at them and figure out how I'm going to edit them. You usually don't use the full length of all the clips that you bring in. So let's just take a look at these guys. And the first order of business here is I want to increase the screen size here. So I'm going to do Control or Command Plus to expand the view like that, or Control or Command Zero to have it fill the screen more or less like that. So let's just take a look at this first clip here. Let's just scrub through it. I have these two bike riders and they go out of frame. And by the way, when you shoot video, it's a good idea to have action go out of the frame because it makes it easier to do the next edit. The next shot here is a shot looking the other direction and they suddenly appear in the frame like that. So that's the edit point there from this shot going out of frame and then go in. But we need to get rid of the stuff at the beginning and the end of this one to have that work out. Let's continue going along here. We go off the distance there. There's a low angle shot of the same thing, so I shot this twice, as you can see. Put the camera right on the asphalt there and stepped out of the way and had them drive by like that. And then here's the low angle shot of them coming through. Here they go off in the distance as well. So I need to pick which one of these sets of shots I want to use. Maybe I want to use three of them instead of four or something like that. We'll figure that out in a second here. Go a little bit farther here. I got this little action shot here just kind of riding along. It's kind of bouncy, so I want to try to pick it up where it's not too bouncy. We're going to edit out some of the really bouncy stuff in a second. And then I've got this what's called point of view shot here from the rider's point of view. I'm looking off to the right and then panning a little bit off to the left. So I'm going to want to edit out a lot of the stuff at the beginning here and just have it be edited just before it starts panning to the left like that. I'm looking at these clips and kind of planning how I want to do it. I'm going to take a look at this number three clip here. I like this low angle shot as kind of a starting shot. So let's just pick them up just before they come around the corner. So see how they come around the corner like that? I want this one to be the first shot. So the first order of business is to drag this clip over to the first clip. Right now the first clip is this other shot where they're already coming around the corner and it's a little higher angle. So I want this third clip to be the first one. To do that, I just simply click on it and drag it to the left. Notice that it's kind of a ghost image there. And then a little black rectangle shows up where you can drop it. If I drop it there, it's going to go ahead of what was previously the first clip. Now everything else slides over to compensate for the fact that I moved it, and then the gap where it was was automatically filled up. Did you see how that worked? I dragged clip 3 and put it in front of clip 1. So now it's 3, 1, 2, 4 is how those clips are numbered. Now I want to trim this guy. So let's just take a look at the beginning here. I want to trim it to some point where the bike riders just kind of make that turn around the corner there. So maybe pick it up right about there. So I'm going to trim away the stuff before that point. So I hover my cursor at the beginning of this clip and it turns into a trim tool. See that little kind of bracket there with the two arrows on it? I just click and drag to the right to the current time indicator and it'll snap to that little playhead like that. And now what's going to happen is that stuff will go away. That'll be trimmed away and everything will slide over. So I trimmed away the beginning. So now the beginning of this clip now is them just starting there right around the corner there. I'm going to come along in little ways like that, for example. Then I'm going to go to this other shot they're already in the frame, a little bit tighter like that. So we'll go from sort of a wide shot to a tight shot. So I want to go to them right about there. So I need to trim this first clip such that I can make that edit. So I'm going to go along here and let's say right about there is where I want to make my edit. So I'm going to trim away all the stuff after that point. I can put my cursor here at the end of the clip and notice it turns to a trim tool where it's pointing to the left now. It's pointing inside the clip. The clip is active, so I'm going to trim the active clip. So I'll click and drag and I'll snap it to the playhead like that. Now we've got that clip trimmed down. We took away some head frames and some tail frames. We got just the good stuff in the middle there. Just that stuff right there. Now I want to make an edit to the next clip, and I need to have it more or less match the shot. So I need to pick up the next clip where they're already in the frame and already around the corner, and maybe right about there, actually, to match the end of this other shot. 
So I'm going to trim this stuff, all the stuff here, away right up to the playhead there. So hover till the little cursor points to the right. Now when I click, it'll make that clip active, and I'll drag it over like this to the playhead. It'll snap to the playhead. It'll get rid of all those head frames and slide everybody over like that. So now you can take a look at what you just did there. Right, going from there to there. So it pretty much matches, I think. You might be able to trim a little bit more away. So I want to zoom in a bit on the timeline by taking this little zoom tool down here and make a more precise edit here like that. Now I think we got a good matched edit where we're picking the bike riders up pretty much at the same spot there. All right, let me zoom back out again like so. Let's take a look at the next shot here. The next shot should be when they pass by the camera and go out of frame. So I want to be able to have them edit out like that and then pick them up going into frame like that. So I need to get them just as they go out of frame here. So I'm going to trim the end of the second clip off just as they get out of frame there like that. I'll trim back to the playhead like so. There you go. All right, so now we've got them long wide shot. A little bit of a tighter shot, and now we're going out of frame. I want to pick them up just as they come into frame in this next shot. There they go. They're coming into the frame just before they come into the frame, like right about there. So I'll trim to the playhead like that. There we go. Let's just see how that works out. Goes like so, goes like that, that, to that, which works. They kind of jump a little bit here as we go through it because they're not going smoothly through it, but the edits I think will be fine. Then they kind of go off in the distance. So maybe I want to have them go farther in the distance using this other low angle shot here. Let's see if that works. Go from there. Let's see. So I go from this shot over here to this shot over here. I don't know. It just doesn't really work as an edit for me. I'm thinking that perhaps I don't need to even use this clip here. So I'm going to click on this clip and press the delete key or the backspace key and I'll delete it. I don't even need that clip. I'm getting rid of it here from the project entirely. It's no longer even here inside the video group. Clip number four is now gone. Now, when I deleted it here from the timeline, I did not delete it from the hard drive. It still resides in the hard drive in its full length. Nothing will happen to it. You cannot damage the original files when you work on them here inside the timeline. All right, let's go along here. I want to pick up this shot, this young lady driving along here. It's kind of bouncing along here. The camera angle and stuff like that's kind of bouncing. So I'm going to try to pick it up where it sort of settles down. It never really settles down, but how about right there? We'll pick it up right there. So I'll trim away all the stuff at the beginning by clicking over here and dragging away the head frames there. And let's kind of cut out a little bit because it kind of gets really shaky at the end too. So we'll just kind of go right about, I guess that's okay. We'll sort of go like that. It's a little shaky, but I think we can live with it for the purposes of this exercise. And now I want to pick up this last point of view shot. I want to pick it up just before the camera starts panning to the left here. So I got this shot here. And then I start panning the camera to the left here. So right there is where the pan begins. So I'll back up a little bit before there. So we'll watch a little bit of the foliage going by, and then we'll pan left. So I'll hover my cursor at the beginning of the clip, click, and then drag. And that will trim away the head frames there. Let's see how that works. We'll go back a little bit. We'll kind of drag through here. Go from that shot to that shot. And then pan to the left and go on along like this. And about this point, we can just end our little project by trimming away the tail frames there. What we have here is a little video. But if we watch it from beginning to end, we'll last about 30 seconds or so. Let's see how we do it here. Coming along here. Okay, and they go out of frame. Come into the frame. It's a good edit that way. Moving along. Pick up this little bike right here. Camera's a little bouncy, but not horribly so. And then go to the point of view shot. Like so, and then pan left. And then we'll just call it a day. We can put crossfades between these shots. We can put a crossfade at the end to kind of fade out and put a crossfade at the beginning to fade it up. I'm thinking this one shot here where it's going off into the distance, this one here, I probably could have cut that a little bit earlier. These are all the kind of decisions that you make as you're editing. But in any event, though, I think it did go together fairly well. It did kind of jump as we went along here, but that's just how it plays back off the timeline here. If I were to render this as a video file, it would play back smoothly. So that's how you can rearrange clips, trim clips, and even delete clips from the timeline.